Welcome to Goop Tales, episode 30, Erlidin and the Swallow's Nest Castle. See Erlidin, a cunning miss, whom everybody longed to kiss. She was so sweet, she was so clever. She needed scolding, scarcely ever. Yet she would rise at six o'clock and wake her parents with a shock. Chapter One Once upon a time, there was a sweet yet cunning little goop girl named Erlidin. Erlidin was so clever that she could convince her mother to let her stay home from school to build houses with her blocks by telling her mother that it was a learn from home project. Erlidin was excellent at thinking up absurd reasons to get things she wanted, and somehow she always seemed to convince whoever was in authority to give her her way. The other goops loved her for this because they could tag along with Erlidin and benefit from her clever ways. The one thing the other goops didn't particularly enjoy was that Erlidin always wanted to start the day so early. She would get up before the sun had even finished rising and begin to make noise, which always awoke those around her. Erlidin wanted everyone else to be awake too, so she would have someone to play with. One Saturday morning, Erlidin woke up and popped out of bed. She grabbed her little gavel and pounded it several times in an attempt to wake up her parents. They had gotten to the point where they wore earplugs to bed and they ignored Erlidin in the mornings, especially Saturday mornings. It only took a few minutes for Erlidin to realize that trying to wake her parents was a complete waste of time. She decided to go after a better prospect, her goop friend, Muddyfoot. Muddyfoot and Erlidin were great friends and had many adventures out in the wild. But best of all, Muddyfoot didn't mind getting up early. He knew that if he was exploring with Erlidin, they were sure to have a grand time. Muddyfoot was burrowed deep in his covers when Erlidin came banging into his room and pounded her gavel and shouted, Get up! It's time! Go and chase the sunrise! Chasing sunrises was one of Erlidin's favorite activities, and she usually did it alone, but she was determined that Muddyfoot would come along with her today. She pulled off his covers and pounded her gavel again as she called out, Up and at him, Muddyfoot! The sunrise waits for no one! Muddyfoot was quite a good sport, so he hopped up and pulled on his favorite exploring boots, and off they went. They waded through pools and puddles left over from the rain until they arrived at Erlidin's favorite bridge. It was a rickety wood bridge that crossed over marshy water into a beautiful grassy green field that had a perfect view of the sunrise. Erlidin and Muddyfoot started traipsing across the bridge. Erlidin st- stomped on each little slat and pounded down her gavel as they crossed. There was no one else in sight, just Erlidin, Muddyfoot, and the rising sun. Halfway across the bridge, Erlidin was making such a racket that even Muddyfoot grew concerned. Uh, maybe you should tone it down, Erlidin? I mean, it's, it's just, it's still so early and everyone is still asleep. Even the sun has barely woken up. Muddyfoot, it is time for everyone to wake up, Erlidin called back. Is it now? boomed a voice from above. Both Erlidin and Muddyfoot froze. Then they glanced around. Muddyfoot mouthed to Erlidin. Who said that? Erlidin shook her head as she had no idea. I'm up here, boomed the voice again. 
both Erlidin and Muddyfoot looked up into the sky, where they saw the most glorious group of clouds gliding above them. They were white with pink and yellow edges that glowed in the rising sun. We're all watching you, Erlidin. We were peacefully making our way east this morning, and then you come along and make a racket. This is the only break we get. We clouds work just about 24-7, and now you have to disturb our peace? We've discussed it, and we think you've done this one too many times. And this time, you're not getting away with it, said the cloud. Erlidin's ears pricked up, and she stared over at Muddyfoot, who had a look on his face that said, Don't look at me. As the clouds drifted by overhead, they shot down a huge gust of wind that swirled around Erlidin and picked her up. Muddyfoot watched as Erlidin twirled up into the clouds and disappeared. Chapter 2 Erlidin could feel herself swirling around as if she were in a tornado. She was tossed and turned and tumbled. She kept her eyes closed the entire time until she felt her feet landing back on the wood slats from the bridge. Everything went silent. Erlidin opened her eyes and turned around to find Muddyfoot. But instead, she found that she was standing on a bridge that was suspended and held in the air by two giant rocks. There was a glistening ocean in front of her, and Muddyfoot wasn't there. Erlidin carefully made her way across the bridge and landed on one of the rocks. She looked back at the sparkling ocean and said out loud, I wonder where I am. A slithery little voice replied, You're at the Black Sea in Ukraine. What are you doing here? Erlidin looked down to see a scaly little lizard looking back at her. She let out a little laugh (laughs) and reached down to pick him up. Not so fast, Missy. You can't just grab me like that. I'm not a doll. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean you any harm. I just thought we could talk easier if you were closer to me, said Erlidin. Mm-hmm. I see. Well, for the time being, we're close enough. So you just showed up here. Huh. Well, you're in Ukraine now, so you are in for an adventure, said the lizard. What do you mean by that? asked Erlitin. Well, in order to get back to wherever you came from, which I assume you'll want to do sooner or later, you've got to go to the Tunnel of Love. And that will be a journey. Oh, the Tunnel of Love? That sounds divine, said Erlidin as she thought of Muddyfoot, wishing he was there. Well, it can be lovely, no pun intended, (laughs) but it is ways away, and in order for you to find it, you have to get a painted egg from the swallow's nest, which is not as easy as you may think. Well, Mr... asked Erlidin as she looked down at him. Mr. Anton... But you can just call me Anton, if you please, replied the lizard. Mr. Anton, I am nothing if not clever and cunning, so I will find this painted egg, said Erlidin as she pounded down her gavel. Anton laughed. He liked Erlidin. She was full of bravado, but she had a certain alluring charm, and she definitely had confidence a quality he always admired. And what can I call you? He asked. Erlidin, she replied with delight. She knew she was growing on Anton, and that 
was exactly what she intended. Well, Mr. Anton, you have been quite generous with your time, and I wouldn't want to take up any more of it, so I will be off now to find the swallow's nest. Erla Din said as she turned to leave. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on, young miss. You don't even know what the swallow's nest is, and you can't just zip off like that, replied Anton. Well, it's just a bird's nest. I'm sure I can find one in a nearby forest, answered Erla Din. Not exactly. I think you may need my help. In fact, if you want to pick me up, you can, and I will tell you why you need my help, said Anton. Erla Din smiled to herself. She had played hard to get, and it had worked. But of course, she said as she reached down and lifted Anton up to her shoulder. So tell me about this swallow's nest, Mr. Anton. Anton went on to tell Erlidin all about the swallow's nest. It was an enormous castle that sat on a cliff that hung out high over the Black Sea in Ukraine. Local legend said that long, long ago, a king and queen lived in the castle and they had eight children. The queen and her children used to paint the most beautiful Ukrainian eggs with magnificent patterns and brilliant colors. Every Easter, they would give the eggs away to the local villagers. One day, the swallow's nest was attacked by soldiers from a foreign land. As the soldiers approached the castle, the queen quickly gathered up the colored eggs and gave them to her children to hide throughout the castle. She told them, We will be captured soon, but we must continue to spread love so that one day there will be no more fighting. These eggs have all been made with love, so anyone who finds one will help spread the message for years to come. Erlidin hung on to every word that Anton said, and when he was finished, she said, Let's go! So now I'm going with you? answered Anton with a little smile. Well, if you insist. But there is just one thing you should know before we go. What's that? asked Erlidin. The entrance to the swallow's nest is closed right now. The only way to approach it is from the Black Sea. You have to scale the cliff, and the bottom of the cliff area is swimming with scorpion fish. Chapter 3 Scorpion fish! screamed Erlidin. Then she stopped herself mid-scream and just stood in silence with her eyes closed. Anton stared back at her, not sure what to say. He understood her screaming, but not her silence. Erlidin had taught herself not to make things worse by panicking. Instead, when she was met with a challenge, she would get very quiet and try to visualize a solution to the problem. She often did this early in the morning when everyone else was sleeping. With her eyes closed, Erlidin imagined being in clear water free of scorpion fish at the bottom of the cliff with Anton on her shoulder. Then she saw herself scaling the large cliff wall with ease. Anton sat silently watching her. He had no idea what she was doing. He had never seen anyone behave like this. She seemed so deep in thought that he didn't want to disturb her. But they needed to keep moving. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go, said Erlidin as she opened her eyes. She seemed calm and relaxed, so Anton didn't say a word. Lead the way to the swallow's nest, said Erlidin. So they set out to the swallow's nest, 
walking through the Ukrainian countryside. They walked through cornfields and passed by cottages with thatched roofs. Villagers wearing bright-colored clothing waved at them as they walked along. It was all very charming, but Anton was growing nervous. He didn't know what Erledin's plan was, and he didn't want to be surrounded by stinging, poisonous scorpion fish. They approached the sea beneath the swallow's nest just as the sun started to descend. Erledin turned to Anton and said, We'll set up camp here. Until I tell you to get up, just trust me. What time will that be? inquired Anton. Early. So early, it will make your eyes squint and your bones creak. So get ready, laughed Erledin. Anton just sighed. <sighs> he hated getting up early, but he decided to go along with the plan, even though he didn't know what it was. Anton and Erledin settled into a cozy little nook near the Black Sea at the bottom of the cliff leading up to the swallow's nest. Erledin dozed off immediately. Anton had a hard time sleeping, so he wandered down to the water and looked out over the Black Sea. The moonlight shot deep into the water and lit up the ocean floor. Anton stared down and watched as hundreds of red scorpion fish hovered, waiting for prey. He was horrified. There was no way he and Erledin could risk going in that water. He looked up at the swallow's nest as it sat atop the high cliff above. It was a magnificent castle, and he knew that finding an egg and helping Erledin journey to the Tunnel of Love would be worth it, but not if he had to die along the way. Anton rushed back to warn Erledin about the scorpion fish, but she was still fast asleep. He called her name. Erledin, Erledin, get up! And he shook her, but she didn't budge. He found a nearby stick and began to poke and prod at Erledin, but still no movement. He couldn't wake Erledin. Chapter 4 After an hour of poking and prodding, Anton gave up. He was sapped. He was just a tiny lizard, after all. It was well past midnight when he finally fell asleep on Erledin's shoulder. Anton had just closed his eyes when he felt Erledin poke him. He opened one sleepy eye and saw Erledin staring straight back at him. It's time to get up, Sleepy. I told you it would be early. Look, the sun is going to come up in about ten minutes. We need to get down to the water, sang out Erledin in a cheery voice. Anton groaned. Why so early? Oh, didn't I tell you? asked Erledin. Scorpion fish are exceptional sit-and-wait predators. They hunt at night and spend daylight hours resting in crevices. So they are going to their sleeping spots now that the sun is coming up. We should get going. Anton couldn't believe it. Erledin really did have a good plan after all. He wished he had gone to sleep when she had, because he could barely keep his eyes open. They went down to the water, just as the sun peeked over the horizon. Erledin hopped into the ocean without hesitation and swam over to the cliff's edge with Anton clinging to her shoulder. They both looked up at the castle far above. They had a large cliff to scale. Erledin had felt quite victorious up until this moment, but looking up at the cliff was daunting. We got this. I have your back. Trust me in a way that I should have trusted you. I'm an expert at climbing walls. I will carve out a path for us and tell you exactly where to climb and where the best cracks are for holding on. 
Just follow me, said Anton. Arladin did exactly as Anton directed, and they scaled the cliff like pros. They went right up to the castle and landed in the ballroom of the Swallow's Nest. It was a glorious ballroom looking out over the Black Sea. Erladin walked to one of the huge windows that overlooked the sea and closed her eyes. She took in a deep breath and visualized herself finding one of the painted eggs that had been hidden many years ago. This time, Anton knew what she was doing, and he quietly sat on her shoulder without saying a word. Erladin opened her eyes and said, Let's find an egg. Then she and Anton set about searching the castle. They looked under every piece of furniture. They opened door after door and searched in every tiny closet. After three hours of searching, there was no sign of even one of the beautiful hidden eggs. Anton, we're going about this the wrong way. Let's stop and think for a moment. If you were a child, where would you hide an egg to keep it safe from the soldiers? Then Erladin closed her eyes again. She imagined herself in her room at home, having to hide a small egg. And then she knew where to look. I got it. We need to find the nursery or the playroom. There must be one in this castle said Erladin, as she started up a set of stairs. Up and up the stairs they went, to the very top of the castle, and in one of the very top turrets they found an old abandoned playroom with discarded toys scattered everywhere. There were tiny toy bicycles and boats and a little wooden train set. Anton still didn't understand what they were looking for, but at this point he did trust Erladin. Then Erladin called out, Look over here! As she pointed to a group of stuffed teddy bears and a few stuffed bunny rabbits all grouped together in one corner. There's an egg here. I just know it, she said. Anton and Erladin carefully removed the animals away and underneath them found a tiny straw basket with six beautifully painted eggs. Erladin took an egg and covered up the rest. I only need one. I'll leave the rest for someone else, she said as she winked at Anton. Then Erladin said goodbye to Anton as he left to go and scale back down the cliff before it got dark again. She held on to her egg and closed her eyes and wished that she were in the tunnel of love. Erladin heard a bird chirp and when she opened her eyes, she was in the most glorious place made of trees and plants that formed a tunnel over an old train track. She felt nothing but love, so she stood and soaked it all in until she felt the ground beneath her feet start to rumble. She looked down to see the train tracks at her feet, and then she looked up to see a large yellow train barreling down the tracks right towards her. She faced the train, held on to her egg, closed her eyes, and said, I would love to go home right now. And she did. When Erladin opened her eyes again, she was back safe at home. She looked at her little painted egg and thought of Muddyfoot. She set off to find Muddyfoot and tell him all about her adventure in Ukraine. But Muddyfoot was nowhere to be found. He was deep in Botswana, being chased for his dirt. But that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Goop Tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one. You can tag us on social media at Goop Tales on either Facebook or Instagram. 
I'd love to hear your questions and comments. And you can also leave me a voicemail if you go to gooptales.com and use the little prompt in the sidebar. Okay, I will see you in the next Gooptale.